Hales Russell is a leadership development facilitator. He and his wife of 47 years reside in Milton, Pennsylvania. Retiring after 37 years in the electric industry, he began his second career six years ago. He is often found with his Labrador retriever, Huckleberry, by his side while giving leadership inspirational keynotes. A leadership development facilitator, Kaz helps companies build a value-based leadership culture. Speaking from coast to coast and internationally, Kaz blends humor with life and leadership. Author of his first published book, Nuggets, which is available on Amazon, Kaz shares 19 nuggets which he needed to learn and wants others to learn from his experience. Please welcome with his presentation, Intentional Ownership, Kaz Russell. Hey, well, thanks for, thanks for inviting me. Thanks for having me on today. I really appreciate it. Uh, here, I'm located here in my, work, my workshop area in, in my house, and I have grown to have a great passion for leadership. And during my career at work, uh, I never thought, I, I never looked at myself as a leader. And I find that a lot of people don't. And so it makes me wonder why. Why don't I see myself as a leader? Do you see yourself as a leader? So my parents growing, when I was growing up, my parents were, were very uh, uh, dedicated to good dental hygiene. And in the, in the mid sixties going to the dentist, well, let's just say not my favorite thing to do. And so I went one time to the dentist and I actually, actually would walk from the one high school, which was a mile to the dentist office on my own. I was 14. And the one year, well, when I was 14, I went one time, the second time of the year, I had seven cavities. And you could just feel the old armchair melting. My fingernails were gripping into it. I still, I'm, even my chair now is starting to get a little sweaty. And so that really went through me to the core. I went home that night realizing for the next seven weeks, I have to walk from Milton, uh, from the Milton School down to the office. So every Thursday, right after school, off I went. And I can't say I was crying, but I was sobbing the whole way. It left an influence on me. It left an impact for the rest of my life. And today, I know dentists, and I really admire them, but not so much at age 14. In fact, I wasn't even sure they were human. I'm not even sure they were you know, out there at a certain spacious level that were like, they, you only go to their office, but they aren't really alive. If you aren't at their office, they're not alive. They only come alive when you go in and smell the burning teeth. And, the, and you would hear that hook over your mouth, <laughs> sucking the saliva out of your mouth. You think it left an impact on me? Has it left an impact on you? I bet it has. Well, leadership is very similar to dentistry. How is that? Leadership is influence. So now as I go to the dentist, I ask my dental hygienist, I said, when do you think people brush their teeth the most thorough? Anyone? The morning of the visit. I'm gonna clean six months up of my teeth this morning. I'm gonna fix everything I've been doing wrong for six months this morning. Doesn't work that way, does it? I can still remember sitting in the chair and you had that green cuspidor with the two stainless steel tubes shooting it around. And I would look up into the dentist's eyes and I would see his eyes through the glasses and I could actually see into my own mouth. And I can still see the water going around the drain. And as a 14 year old boy might think, Oh man, when I spit in there, where is my water going? Is it going down to the river, out to the ocean? You know how your mind wanders. And that's, so it got me thinking about I relating dentistry to leadership. Leadership grows every day. Just like your teeth to, to guard for tartar, a plaque, cavities, we need to have a thorough uh, uh, protection of them. Leadership is the exact same way. We need to learn leadership every day. When I talk about leadership, I'm not talking about General Patton. I'm not talking about the president, the owner of the company, or even my supervisor when I'm retired now. I'm talking about you and me as leaders, both at home, at work, and at play. So what is leadership and how does that work? 
So how do I become a, a maybe just one step better than I already am now? For seven weeks, I walked to the dentist to get better. So what are we doing today to improve our life as a leadership? And most of the times when I speak at conferences around the United States, it's people say, well, I'm not a leader. And I wanna say, yes, you are a leader because leadership is influence. So everyone repeat after me, leadership is influence. So how do I grow my leadership skills? How do I ingrain this into myself and my family and my coworkers and my friends and family that they are all leaders? I say we use intentional ownership. And that's what today's talk about is intentional ownership. I love those two words. Intentional means what? It means I'm gonna set about achieving something and ownership. Ownership means that I take responsibility, I accept mistakes for my life and for the things that happen around me that are under my control. I take ownership. What builds leadership? What builds trust? What builds faith better than anything to me is when people trust you. When they know they can come to you day in, day out, and Kaz is always there for them. Kaz has integrity, character honesty, commitment. Now I am a man of faith and that's very important to me. And a lot of stuff that I learned from different leaderships comes from the Bible, but it also comes from Zig Ziglar, Andy Stanley, Simon Sinek. I was down to got to meet Lou Holtz on stage and Robert Sherjavik from Shark Tank. And when I first started learning leadership, I thought it was a silver bullet. It's not a silver bullet. Every day we can learn leadership. What works for Kaz doesn't always work for Nick. But leadership is timeless. From the biblical days to all the future, there are leadership principles that will always be in play. Telling the truth, integrity, character, dependability. My father was in World War II. I'm very proud of him going through that. I asked him how he became such a good rifle shot. And so for a joke, he would tell me, well, I shoot my rifle first at a target and then I draw the circle. I'm like, what? He said, yeah, I always get a bullseye. I said, oh, in, in life, isn't that how it happens a lot of times? We sometimes just shoot from the hip, we go do things, but we really haven't set our what? Our intentions. We haven't taken ownership saying, I am going to become the person. I am going to be the grandfather for my grandchildren that they look up to, they respect, and that they, they model after. Because that's what leaders do, don't we? we? We like to learn from other people. We grab things from other people and we absorb them, make them our own. So in the book and in my own life, I don't necessarily want you to take everything as mine as gospel. I want you to challenge it. I want you to just say, hmm, that works or hmm. I think I better investigate this some more. So leadership is influence. Everyone repeat after me. Leadership is influence. Now there are many definitions for leadership. Uh, General Eisenhower, all your great uh, leaders of the world have it. So John Maxwell has broken it down to influence. So when I started my first company, the company I have now, CazRussell.com, I went through the John Maxwell University and got my certi certificate. In high school, I read, I gotta do this. I read this many books in high school. I did every book report the night before from the inside cover. I am not a natural born reader. I went to college twice and didn't graduate either time. I didn't get a degree, but you know, I learned a lot. But I did spend 37 years in power plants working long hours, night shift, weekends, seen some vicious accidents, seen some vicious explosions, lived through them. And each one of these things have been a part of my life to help me grow who I am. And as we grow through them, I needed to learn that it wasn't a failure, it was a mistake. But what I tried to do as a leader, helped me learn to do it better. I was listening to Terry Lancaster an hour earlier today, and uh, very, very interesting how we learn things in small pieces. Uh, the, the book is sort of is that way. It's meant in small pieces. 
So now that I've given you my version of influence, leadership is influence. How do I become a leader? How do I change who I am? Should I change who I am? Do I need to change who I am? So I've been dog training for 40 years. And as you see the picture of the dogs and what happens with dogs is God has made them their personality, just like he made each of us our own unique personality, one of a kind. There's no other calves, thank goodness. My wife will own up to that. But he wants my personality that way. I'm a type A, I'm a high I on the disc. You're all familiar with the disc. I'm a high I influential, but I can be demanding uh, in emotional awareness, uh, re studying through those with uh, Dr. Travis Bradbury. I'm a, I score very low on emotional intelligence. I'm just being vulnerable here so you get to know a little bit more about me. This is my picture of, so how do I change as a person, not my personality, my behaviors. So with dog training, how do I train my dog not to jump up on people, not to go to the bathroom in the neighbor's yard? Because the neighbor does not like that at all. So if I allow my dog to go to the bathroom in the neighbor's yard, I've now taught my dog to go in the neighbor's yard. Can you relate to that? Dr. Phil says we, we teach people how to treat us. So the first chapter in the book is what we allow we teach. So I'm trying to learn this at work. I'm trying to learn this with my grandchildren. So how does CAS apply this change of intentional ownership of what we allow we teach? How do I do that to change that to my life? How do I, how do I become that? My, that's my natural go-to instinct. So if I'm at work and a coworker talks to me in an unsavory tone of voice, and I don't address it, then I've taught it. But if I address it in front of everybody with a harsh tone, a lack of leadership skills, people skills, human skills, not soft skills. Human skills aren't soft skills. Throw that one out the window. Everybody take your hand and throw that out the window. Right now, I want to say, take that soft skill stuff. It's not out the window. Because you can be more effective as a leader if you have a high IQ than a high EQ, emotional intelligence, than you can a high IQ. You believe that? Think about it. How many times have your emotions jumped into play and made a decision? Man, if, if I would have been calmer, if I'd have been more time, to, well, that's another whole book I'm starting on. So how does CAS change? I learn from other people. I watch what other people do. I might say, hey, Lester, I'm not gonna do what Lester did. I saw that, I'm not going down that road. Janet, now, now that's something I wanna model. So we learn from other people and Terry was talking about that too earlier about other people. Anybody here familiar with dementia? And Alzheimer's, Pick's disease, hardening of the arteries. So when my mother got it about 15 years ago, she, uh, we, didn't, we didn't know she had it. We couldn't identify it. And I didn't know anything about it. So I went to a class on Alzheimer's and really dementia is the umbrella. And you have all these legs of Alzheimer's, Pick's disease that, that go under that category. Well, that's how I look at leadership. Leadership is the umbrella of our life. How do I live my life day in, day out? Or just like they say, a man of integrity does the same thing in the darkness as he does in the light. How do I learn? How do I change those? So if I look at leadership as how I make my decisions, am I honest? Do I play right or do I play fair? There's a difference. Do I make decisions? When I, at my peak times or my low times? Am I a good team player? Do I know how to help a team develop a culture in your business? You see, the, if we allow the people to set the culture, it might not be what we want. If I allow my dogs to set the culture in my house, it possibly isn't really what I want. But how do I win people over? How do we influence them? Leadership is what? 
leadership is influence. How do I influence my grandchildren? How do I influence other people around me? And so it doesn't, we don't want it to be uh, what you would say behind. We don't want to manipulate because Kaz wants to be Kaz day in, day out. I want to be that person who's honest, who has integrity. And as I speak at many churches with my dogs, <laughs> we take dogs in churches. And as I speak around the country, a couple of companies have been flying me around the United States, which is pretty cool because I love to fly. I don't fit in the seats too well. I am six foot three. And when you weigh an eighth of a ton, most of those chairs don't fit you. Sort of puts it in perspective when you say an eighth of a ton. Or as my mom would say, you're just a big bone boy. That's true, ma'am. So I got to take care of my mom for eight years through the Alzheimer's, but now I want to take that correlation of leadership over to the Alzheimer's where we talked about the umbrella and keep learning about leadership. Think of the person who has left the biggest impact in your life. Okay, if you're like me, there's probably many. How many of you have how many of you can remember your first grade teacher? Raise your hand. One. Why? Two. Why do you remember your first grade teacher? I guess you can't talk back or unmute. So we'll just sort of add a little bit. Thank you for raising your hands. But we do remember people that leave an impact on us. That first grade teacher, that's what she wanted to do. She wanted to help first graders. She wanted to play an instrument part in their life. And she knew how to connect with them. Did she talk like you and I might talk like on a Toastmasters event? Absolutely not. She had to talk to their level. She had to know her audience. Is that a good Toastmasters key, right? We remember our first grade teachers. So how does Kaz, after so many of the years of uh, maybe not knowing and understanding leadership, how do I become that leader I, I want to be? So I want to share with you three, three things under intentional ownership that I believe can help you every day. But more importantly, they helped me. You see, I'm speaking about things that I had to learn. I did not read a book and know how to ride a bicycle until I got on the bicycle till I got out in the real world and I wrecked and I had some crashes and some bumps and bruises. Leadership is the same way. We learn principles from gurus that we adhere to. Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn. Uh, and I, I love listening to all these. So it's about building relationships because leadership is relational. Now I can't build a relationship when they're hundred miles away, but I can read. To read is to know. How many like to read? Wow. I'm not sure how many is on there, but I can say that out of every time I ask that question, about 20% say they like to read. Isn't that amazing? I thought, wow, there's not many much reading going on, is there? But yet, almost every Zoom call you look at, what's in the background of that Zoom? Books. It's there for effect. It's a subliminal suggestion. But reading is the key. You know, there's a book about, there, about everything out there. So I was hoping there wasn't a book about how you relate dog training to life and leadership. But more importantly, I teach a dog lesson, a funny story with it, and then how you can apply it to your life. But it's still up to you to do it. Remember when I was talking about what we allow, we teach, and if I have a coworker that talks to me in an unsavory voice or I'm having an argument with somebody, maybe it's time to address it in front of the group so everybody knows where Kaz stands and what he expects and doesn't expect, or what I call unacceptable behavior. Everybody say unacceptable behavior. I learned this from a gentleman in the nuclear industry. We would sit in meetings and when somebody didn't have their assignment done, he would not get mad. He would not yell. He would not, read, he would not talk with his eyebrows. He would just say, that's unacceptable behavior. We'll talk about it at nine o'clock. He had emotional intelligence. 
but he had influence. You can bet everybody in that room was going, oh boy, I'm glad I'm not going to his office. But I did end up in his office that afternoon because I was the one he was talking to. And the first thing he said to me when I came in and says, hey kid, that's unacceptable behavior. I expected a better report the next time. Now get back to work. I thought I was, I didn't know what to expect. So we need to read. And if we're, and if you know people around you, the greatest way to learn to read is to help others encourage them to read. Number two, for intentional ownership, is associate yourself with those you can learn from. Terry Lancaster said earlier, you're a combination of the five people you're closest to. And I love that saying. And so my grandchildren come up from the city to the country and they say, Pat, everywhere we go, everybody knows you. Whether I have my hat on or not, and I'm a hat guy, I like meeting people and valuing them for who they are. For who they are, not who I want them to be. So we want to read, we want to associate ourselves with people, and then we want to take action. We want to get on that bicycle and go for a ride. We want to get on there and fall off and maybe break a bone. Or better yet, maybe a root canal comes along that disrupts your day and makes you and helps you to change your behaviors. Read, associate, and take action. I can honestly say that is my model of life. Every morning I try to read both from the Bible and learn the spiritual side, but also the real world side. And it has helped me at age 67 to get through 47 years of marriage consecutively. No breaks in there. A, a, a wonderful career, my first career, and now I'm on my second career as CazRussell.com. I love to speak and share and inspire people to learn what leadership is and give them the tools to work with. Give them some stories that you can relate to because every story should have a point and every point should have a story. You've heard that very common in Toastmasters, right? I hope you had a wonderful time today. I was honored. And in fact, when Steve had invited me, I said immediately, yes. I mean, the more practice I get in, the better I get. The more, more I help others, the more Kaz learns. I hope you had a wonderful time today. And I hope you reply to me on my e through my email system, kazrussell.com. Check out my dogs and everything else in, uh, on my website. I'm hoping to do this till I'm 80. So I got another 13 more years of learning. I hope I've challenged you to grow to your full potential. As I close my session on intentional ownership, a most valuable saying, Mark Twain says, the two greatest days of a person's life, the day you're born and the day you know why. At age 65, I became an overnight success. Thank you very much for listening and learning about intentional ownership.